does meat really rot in human colons? Uh, we're going to talk about that in this video. And actually, at the end, I'm going to tell you what actually does rot in your colon. Uh, this myth was initially put out there on YouTube and other social media platforms by dishonest vegan influencers. And almost any reputable vegan influencer these days, they no longer tell this lie. But the echo of this lie still reverberates in the vegan community, uh, in less educated vegans. Many, many of them still believe this. On one of my Instagram posts the other day, I got tons of comments saying that meat rots in your colon. And I thought everyone knew that this wasn't true. So I wanna go through some anatomy and physiology in this short video. And if you watch it till the end, I'll actually tell you the things that do rot in the human colon. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and let's follow a big chunk of fatty meat, delicious succulent meat that you've salted well and cooked perfectly. We're gonna follow that from your lips to the other sphincter, and we're gonna talk about what exactly happens to it. When you put a piece of meat in your mouth, whether it's well done or whether it's completely raw, you're gonna chew it up. And whether you chew it well or whether you wolf it down, immediately when that piece of meat hits your stomach, your stomach pH is somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5. It's one of the most acidic stomach environments of any mammal or any animal on the planet. Only uh, scavengers like buzzards have a more acidic pH than human beings. And that's another lie that you'll hear often in the vegan community is that our stomach pH is much more like a uh, herbivore, four, five, six pH. Absolutely not true unless you're taking, you know, Nexium or Prilosec or something like that and, and canceling out all of your, the acid in your stomach. Your stomach is very acidic and you, you have uh, parietal cells in your stomach that also secrete pepsinogen, which is broken down by the stomach acid into pepsin. And the hydrochloric acid in your stomach acid plus the pepsin immediately start breaking down hunks of meat, whether very large or very small. And this immediately, before it ever leaves your stomach, the meat is broken up into very tiny pieces and becomes a, a thick, uh, muddy liquid called chyme. I know it's a terrible word, but that's actually what it's called. So when this chyme, which is the broken up meat, reaches the first part of your small intestine, the duodenum or duodenum, the enzymes are still acting on this meat. The uh, pepsin and the hydrochloric acid, the HCL gets neutralized in your small intestine, but then you also have other enzymes called trypsin and chymotrypsin, which continue to break the meat apart in the first part of your small intestine. So we're not to the colon yet. We're just still in the very first part of the small intestine. The trypsin, the chymotrypsin, and the pepsin are breaking down the meat into molecular size structures. It's breaking all of the protein molecules apart into amino acid chains. Then the amino acid chains get broken down into single amino acids. You have something called lipase also in, your, in the duodenum, first part of your small intestine, that's breaking down any globules of fat that remain. The bile is also emulsifying and making globules of fat. And then the lipase is breaking those down. So by the time that the meat reaches the second part of your small intestine, the jejunum, that's also a cool word, right? It is literally broken down into its molecular structure. It is individual amino acids, individual fatty acids, and even the DNA in meat is broken down into the individual nucleosides. So before you ever get to the colon, meat is completely digested back into the, the amino acids, the fatty acids, and the, all the vitamins and minerals that you find in meat, that's all that's left. There are no hunks of meat, even in the middle section of the small intestine. So then the meat continues on to the third part of your small intestine called the ileum. And you may say, well, wait a minute, Dr. Barry, how do you know that there's not chunks of meat still at that point? Because you know, most people, we can't see inside of our intestines or inside our colon. So how do I know this for a fact? Well, I've been practicing family medicine for 21 years, and during that time, I've had many patients who have ostomies. A few have had ileostomies, which is they had colon cancer or they had some colon problem, and we needed to let the colon rest. 
So we would actually make an opening, an ostomy, in the third part of their small intestine, the ileum. So it's an ileostomy. And so their waste, instead of passing through the rectum and the anus, would actually come out of their ileum. And so if there are any hunks of meat left at that point, remember we're still in the small intestine, you would see it in the ostomy bag. Now there is a list of things that my patients have told me that they saw in their ostomy bag, but it was never meat. So then we're gonna pass through, the what's left of the meat's gonna pass through the ileocecal valve from the small intestine into the cecum, the first part of the large intestine. Now your, your large intestine is filled with billions, if not trillions of bacteria, right? And when bacteria act on something, uh, most vegans will say it ferments it, but you know another word for ferment? Right, yeah. And that's why if you leave something outside and, and bacteria are able to get it and get to it, it's gonna start, what, stinking, right? That's the, that's the fermenting or the rotting process as the bacteria and the fungi start to break down whatever foods you left laying on the kitchen counter too long. And there are actually multiple sites on the colon where we can form an ostomy. So if, we, if, the, if the distal part of the colon, we need to let it rest, we can, we can put a, a ostomy in the cecum, we can put an ostomy in the ascending colon, the transverse colon, or the descending colon, or even the sigmoid colon. We can put ostomies in any of these places to let the remainder of the colon or large intestine rest. And so I've had patients with ostomies in all these positions of their large intestine, and not a single patient has ever said, oh yeah, I saw a big hunk of ribeye, or I saw a piece of bacon in my ostomy uh, contents when I was changing my ostomy bag. But they did say that they saw several other foods in their ostomy bag that did not digest in the upper part of the digestive system and were in fact rotting in their colon. Before I made this video, I wanted to be 100% sure. I wanted to talk to somebody who de has dealt with thousands of ostomy bags and the contents therein. So I reached out to a friend of mine who's an ostomy nurse. And that, that's literally, she, all she does is take care of ostomies after the surgical procedure. She teaches the patients how to change their ostomy bag, how often to do it, how to, how to take care of the ostomy or the opening so that it doesn't get infected. And I asked her, how many times have you seen meat, any kind of meat, the, the bologna, hot dogs, cheap meat, expensive meat, bacon, in an ostomy bag from the ileum all the way down to the sigmoid colon? And she thought for a minute and she said, you know, I don't think I've ever saw a piece of meat come into an ostomy bag. What I do see, okay, are you ready? Are you ready to know what really rots in the human colon? She said, I have seen... Uh, nuts, lots of nuts. I've seen corn, lots of corn. I've seen pieces of broccoli, pieces of cauliflower. I've seen lots of beans. Uh, I've seen oats even in ostomy bags, but I've never seen a piece of meat. So now we're left with objective evidence. This is eyewitness testimony from someone who's changed thousands of ostomy bags over her career. She's never once seen meat in the ostomy bag, but she's seen lots of different plants in the ostomy bag, the most common being corn and nuts, the most common nut being peanuts. And the reason this, this happens is that all of these plant foods are full of cellulose, which some people call fiber. And the human gut is not able to digest fiber ever. Cellulose, we can't break that down. And humans don't even have gut bacteria like ruminants do that can break the cellulose bonds between the individual sugar molecules. So fiber is waste. We have to poop that out. And so fiber is not digested in your stomach, small intestine, or large intestine. And that's why some people call that evidence food, because when you have a bowel movement, you see the evidence food in the toilet. That's what rots in your colon, is oats, nuts, corn, broccoli, cauliflower, beans, and any fibrous plant remnants. That's what's rotting in your colon. So please share this video and help me just help all of the well-intentioned but misinformed vegans of the world that meat does not rot in your colon. Meat doesn't even hardly make it into your small intestine. It never makes it to the colon. Uh, this is one of many myths, that one of, one of many echoes of a lie that continues to be 
perpetuated in the vegan community, it misleads vegans and it makes them think false things and it makes them say stupid things. And I really wanna help our vegan brothers and sisters understand that meat is one of the very first things that's digested in the human uh, digestive system because it's so nutrient dense, your body wants that nutrition right now. What does rot in your colon is the plants. Hope this video helped. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, click that thumbs up. And if you really wanna become part of my private community, I have a Patreon account. You can sign up, you can spend a buck a month, three bucks a month, five bucks a month, and you get access to three extra live question and answer sessions with me and my beautiful wife, Nisha. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.